I have visited the Santa Barbara Museum in my hometown, and it was a refreshing experience. The last time I went there was in a field trip in high school five years ago. A lot has changed since then, and I was very excited that the what new things were there. There were new exhibits, and now I get to roam around in the museum and exhibits I ne- that I never got the chance to see while I was in a, cl- a school field trip. For this project, I was fascinated between Florine St- Stiffener and David Alfaro Guerrero. Florine Stiffener is a no, American Jewish woman. She was born in New York, uh, Rochester, in 1871. She grew up in a wealthy family. Stiffener um, spent much of her childhood and adulthood in New York, studying in visiting museums. During her time in Europe, she attended an early performance of the afternoon of an oven grade and ballet station by um, Ballet Russe. She also continued her studies in painting and was exposed to art, <clears throat> the work of symbolism and the post-impressionist. She painted an urban world that contained fantasy details. Details, for example, the imaginary in the imagination of daydreaming. She would often paint people with exaggerated size flowers and scenes. The beginning of World War I, her family had to move back to New York. She lived for many years in an apartment building with her mother and two sisters who, like Florine, never married or set up a household with anyone, male or female. She and her sisters were very protected of their mother since her father left the family. She never exhibited her her work, but instead to gift them for friends and families or made for her own personal pleasure. She was a feminist and did receive recognition from her artworks before her passing at 77. Stephanie was working on a cathedrals of art. Her sister Antenne Stephanie gifted Florine's art artwork to a art news exhibit. Many of her artwork were interesting and vibrant colors and unusual choices of art styles. Her artworks, The Journey to the Sun, was an abstract style with child-like drawings and development. As I mentioned earlier, she used symbolism and post-impressionism in her works. This artwork was childlike executions, but using oil paints in the bottom of the canvas, there were different styles of flowers. She painted the Artwork with celebration of her birthday. Going upward, the flower and the dragonfly became childlike. Reminding me of a child drawing with crayons, the background also has a childlike unfinishing. All my life, I have seen this mirror outside of State Street in Santa Barbara. You can literally walk in front of it with no action to you. In first grade, I actually thought the art story is that it was drawn by Picasso. But now, since I'm an adult and I can read now and understand more, I learned it was not painted by Picasso, but it was painted by David Alvaro Schiarrio. This is a form of art style is Cubism. Um, Schiarrio is a Mexican muralist who was born in Chihuahua City, Mexico. He grew up during an interesting time where the Mexican Revolution was happening in 1910. The Matrix ideology heavily motivated his work. At the age of 18, he joined the Mexican Revolution, and it was highly involved in student strikes. The strikes was about changing the teaching methods in school, and the strike actually was successful. In 1908, he went to Mexico City to study art and architecture at the Francisco English College. Just like Diego Rivera, he is a committed communist. His communist activities often led him being jailed and exiled. He used his art to demonstrate his leftist politics and express political viewings. At one point, he teamed up with Diego Rivera and Javier Guerrero to form El Machete, which is a weekly paper that announced the Communist Party. Despite him being jailed, he was commissioned to paint one of the most famous murals called Los Mitos, the Mitts, at school. In the 1930s, he traveled into the United States to work in Los Angeles and paint other of his artworks there. In his final 
many years, he continued to paint anti-fascist themes during World War II, and one of the pieces he painted was the New Days of Democracy, Death to the Invaders, and Fraternity Between the Black and White Races. His mural portrait of Mexico today was hidden to it is a political commentary on Mexico American economics and how corrupt it is. He isn't hesitant to paint his ideas. His murals was later donated to the Santa Barbara Museum in 2001, where it is available to the public to see. The mural was originally painted in the interior walls of a covered garden patio in the Pacific Palisades, home of filmmaker Dudley Murphy. And the whole mirror was made with fresco. Starting from the left side of the wall, there is a portrait of financer J.P. Morgan, symbolizing the United States economic power. Then two men that were murdered laying down on the ground. Next, a man with a gun and a mask hanging off of his neck with bags of money next to him. He is the Mexican Revolution soldier and former president, Alcrado Elias Calles. The sack of money represents the corruption of greed. Then a family of three sitting on the steps. The woman with the blue veil appears to be angry. The child is confused. And the old woman is frightened, having the situation with mixed emotions. Finally, at the far right side of the wall, there is a soldier hiding. hiding. The mural demonstrates the international story of social oppression and political corruption the Mexican government is facing during the revolution.